My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Well, today's Gospel reminded me of uh, that song entitled Jenny by the American pop band The Click Five. The song was a success in Asia at the time when I was still young and full of hope in 2007. Some of you may have heard this song during its time. Well, if not, I invite, I invite you on your free time to check it out. The lyrics of the song go like this. She calls me baby, then she won't call me. She says she adores me, and then she ignores me. She leaves me hanging on the line every time she changes her mind. Well, I think in simple words, this song describes for us what fickleness is. In fact, the name Jenny, the title of the song, Jenny supposedly represents anyone who is indecisive. Very much like one of the characters presented to us by Jesus in today's Gospel. Someone whose example, for sure, we shouldn't follow. Well, the Gospel is about a man with two sons. He went and he said to the first, My boy, go and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, I will not go. But then afterwards, he thought the better of it, and he went. So the man then went and uh, said the same thing to the second son, who answered, But of course. But you know, he didn't go. The first son refuses to go, but later changes his mind and does the work. The second son says yes, but he doesn't go. I think this gospel reminds us that words can be meaningless. You look at the first son. He said no, but his action shows his goodness. Then the son, the second son, who said yes, he's quite chummy to his father, but he doesn't actually do the work. So as we pray about this gospel today, think of Jesus asking us to consider whether our words and our actions are in agreement. Some people find it challenging to ever make a commitment in the first place. But then, once they do, they are able to honor the commitment. Other people seem to have less trouble committing, but then they have trouble following through. But then also you have some people who fall somewhere in between. So to all of us who are trying hard to be disciples of Jesus, Jesus addresses the question, which of you is really doing the will of my Father? So you can put yourself in the story of today's Gospel and then see which one are you. But don't be another Jenny. Jenny who leaves you hanging on the line every time she changes her mind. Or like what happened to that serial dog owner. The story goes that um, in the early stages of the relationship, she's head over heels fascinated with her dog. And you know, she didn't even mind cleaning up the dog's mess. There is nothing that she wouldn't do for her new dog companion. But the moment things get complicated, the moment the dog develops a problem, she gets rid of the dogs as soon as they stop being cute puppies. In fact, she has given away four dogs in four years. You see, when the dog is no longer cute, she starts wondering if there's another dog that's more suitable out there. Maybe a dog that is less bouncy or a dog that is less barky. 
And so the new search begins and she cannot rest until she finds a replacement puppy to lie adoringly at her feet. And the same thing can happen in other commitments. We begin our commitments with enthusiasm, with anticipation, until responsibility kicks in. Everybody loves the puppy stage, but remember, every puppy eventually becomes a real dog. And that's where our sense of commitment is tested. So it's easy to make promises. It's more difficult to give the effort to carry them out. That's reality. So in life, when suffering comes, when relationships go sour, how is your level of commitment? Commitment to maybe something as simple as being on time for appointments and commitment to the need to apologize if one is late for those appointments. See, this can happen to any one of us. Like, do you ever say you're going to do something and then it becomes a, I'll do it later, and then it ends up with you never getting around to do it? To do it. This can happen to us in small ways throughout our life. Think of a normal day when you maybe tell somebody you'll call him or you'll call her later and then you don't. Or when you put an item on your daily to-do list and then the list and the items in the list never really get done. Or those times when you promise to do something for someone and you don't follow through. See, every single day, we're forced to choose between yes and no. Learning what to say no or yes to is much easier when you know what your main priorities in life are. That's why we're praying to discern what our priorities are. What do I have to say yes to or no to? For example, don't tell yourself you're going to lose 10 kilos in a week if you've never done a workout plan. Or let's say you tell, you tell people at home that you'll clean something up and you don't. Of course, it won't be the end of the world if you don't. But you've chosen not to do something you said you would. Or we can also fail our commitments with uh, deadlines. When we say that we'll have something uh, by a certain date or a certain time, but then it's the deadline that beats us instead of us meeting the deadline. Or let's say you tell a friend that you'll be somewhere at a certain time and then you show up 30 minutes late. Well, you could leave 30 minutes earlier to show up for that appointment that you've committed yourself to. See, all of these can happen unintentionally, but let's not forget that every time we don't honor a commitment, it's a message that what we say cannot be trusted. And uh, let's not fall for that funny way of validating a promise, like saying, cross my heart and hope to die. Because will you really want to die if you fail to keep your promises? I learned a lot from that wise advice that I want to share with you. Uh, that If you know you're not going to meet expectations, the, the time to say so is not after you fail, but as soon as you know that you're not going to meet expectations. Something like, I know I said I would be done by today, but at this point, it looks like it will be more like tomorrow. Well, it may not be what people will be happy to hear, but it shows that you honor your commitment by laying your cards on the table and giving a warning of an approaching failure. Of course, you have to do your best so that it's not a failure, but if uh, things are beyond your control and there's an approaching failure, just uh, lay your cards on the table. 
it's uncomfortable to take responsibility for a failure, but that is a lot easier to shoulder than disappointment. Well, so far we've reflected on honoring our commitment to people, but what about our commitment to God? What is it that God is asking you to do this day that you have been neglecting to do? And remember, Jesus is asking us the question, which of you is doing the will of my Father? And with what level of commitment are you doing it? So as you look inside yourself to answer that, turn to Mary. You see, through Mary, we go to Jesus after being inconsistent. Through her, who was beside the cross, faithfully accompanying Jesus, we will learn to be consistent in living up to our commitments. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.